Uh, a quick one, science alert. Scientists identify a previously unknown type of storm called an atmospheric lake. A new type of weather condition has been observed existing primarily in one particular part of the world, compact, slow-moving, moisture-rich pools. Researchers are calling these atmospheric lakes. This unique type of storm occurs over the western Indian Ocean and moves towards Africa, unlike most storms created by a vortex. The lakes are produced by water vapor concentrations that are dense enough to produce rain, these atmospheric lakes, atmospheric lakes are similar to atmospheric rivers, narrow bands of dense moisture. However, the new type of meteorological phenomena is smaller, slower moving and detaches itself from the weather system that creates it. So obviously that's the lake with the in or out flow. <laughs> These vapor bodies sometimes drift west over African coast, bringing rain to that semi arid area. By contrast to rain bearing atmospheric rivers of vapor, which are con from source to coastland at an instant, we call these disconnected and drifting water bodies atmospheric lakes, existing as they do in an equatorial region where the wind speed is often very low or negligible. Negligible. These atmospheric lakes are in no rush. In an analysis of five years of meteorological data, the longest lasting storm stayed in the air for 27 days in total. Over the five years, 17 atmospheric lakes lasting longer than six days were discovered within 10 degrees of the equator. It seems that these lakes can happen in other regions too, where they sometimes turn into tropical cyclones. A team is now being put together to run a full study on the phenomena. One of the questions the researchers will be looking at is why the atmospheric lakes detach themselves from the river lake patterns they form from. It's possible due to the overall atmospheric wind patterns. Or perhaps due to the self-propelled winds produced internally. Yeah, how do they form? What's the wind? Where is it coming from? Who is blowing? The winds that carry these things to a shore are so tantalizingly delicately near zero wind speed that everything could affect them, says one of the researchers, atmospheric scientists Brian Mapes from the University of Miami. That's when you need to know that they self-propel, or are they driven by some very much larger scale wind patterns that may change with climate change? The climate change angle is an important one because if increasing temperatures in any way affect the formation and movement of atmospheric lakes, that could impact the rainfall that reaches the east coast of Africa, where it is sorely needed According to MAPES, if all the water in a year's worth of atmospheric lakes were to be liquefied at once, it would create a puddle just a few centimeters deep, but a kilometer, a kilometer, 621 miles, a thousand kilometers probably, that's a significant amount of participation, precipitation. So, uh, I'm really tired, but, and I really, uh, that's the Earth's surface. We have charge underneath. Sometimes it's plus. And. Sometimes it's minus. 
So, let's start again. First surface. If we got here this kind of a negative charge, which is in a way active due to whatever magma movement or what have you beneath the ground. And it will also affect the charge which is on the surface. And I'm not sure which one is needed to get moisture close to the ground. I guess it's positive. So let's maybe draw positive signs here. That's the ground and that's the positive charge in the ground. Of course, there's always both of them, but now let's just imagine there would be so many more pluses. And if there's also charge from above, let's say atmospheric, stratospheric, magnetospheric, reaching down to the ground, it could make this kind of connection. And through that water gets exciting excited through that and it will form this kind of cloud plasma which is fed from above and maybe from below too since i don't have any closer data or like magneto maps or these kind of things i didn't do any research i just wrote this article and our magnetosphere is weakening. We have pole shift is going on. Is there any picture to watch at? Yeah, here actually. <coughs> so it's beside Africa. Okay. We have fault line going there, and here's one. There's many, many, many volcanoes going on there. So probably this is this kind of opposite area from the volcanics. Volcanic activity or seismic, pro I don't know, just guessing. But weather is an electromagnetic phenomenon. The most easiest way to understand this is if you see a lightning bolt from a thunderstorm, which is electricity. It's really hot, really fast, really loud, and sometimes even feared. But this being said, keep in mind that rain, fog, snowfall, Wind, they're all electromagnetically driven. So if we have this kind of electromagnetic atmospheric lake, this could mean that we have this kind of plus here. I might be totally wrong, it could be the opposite. And we have the minuses here. And the same thing is going on underground. Probably, I don't know, could be 50 kilometers, 500 kilometers or even more. If that's Earth, and we have a 
those energy flows which go like through earth everywhere and these positions where they somehow enter earth's crust and make the connection to probably even the core sometimes or they just go like a little bit and down there a few hundred kilometers or something and pop up the other side and they move probably back and forth or whatever and they say it's moving really slowly which could indicate that there's underground something moving that's the reason why it's moving so slowly but it's just so strong it makes the connection upwards to the magnetosphere and all these kind of things but anyway i should go to sleep thanks bye